we've had machines that could spread lava over long distances using a player for a long time, but you know, obviously lava can spread without a player. It just has to flow downwards. Um, well, it does. So you can't go an endless distance, but you can still spread it hundreds of blocks if you start it high enough. <laughs> so I wanted to see if I can make a little flying machine that um, would move downwards and to the side in just the right way that lava could flow over top of it while it moved. So this machine fits the bill. Uh, it just has two sensors, one to move it horizontally and another one to move it downwards. So we start by just placing a lava there and it'll flow over. Uh, the first sensor it will hit is the horizontal one. So then the machine will start moving horizontally. Um, but you can see eventually uh, the lava will reach the downward sensor first and then, you know, it'll start moving down. But what's weird is um, then it'll switch back. So the lava over the horizontal sensor will actually start flowing faster. Um, that's why actually this piston is here. So if we were to just put a block there, um, what would happen is the downward lava would flow faster than the horizontal lava could ever catch up to the sensor. So that what this piston here does um, essentially is to slow down the lava flowing in front of the downward sensor in just the right way that it gives the horizontal sensor lava a chance to catch up. This is a good chance to uh, cover some slimestone basics. So this little contraption right here, um, I don't know, you could just call it an inchworm maybe. So it just inches along one block at a time whenever this observer gets an update. We have two observers facing into this piston. So when it moves, this piston will fire a second time and it fires at just the right time so that when this sticky piston would normally try um, to retract this component. So here, if I get rid of the second observer, now, the sticky piston will just pull it along and it'll turn into a normal engine. When we put the second observer on, now this uh, normal piston fires a second time in just the right way that it stops it from moving. You know, if you fiddle with them long enough, you can figure out a way to glue two of these together. So uh, here's a machine where just, you know, this observer moves it sideways and this observer moves it down. And the last thing you have to do is just kind of fiddle with the arrangement of the observers until um, the lava flow updates them correctly. And then, like I showed earlier, you need the, the kind of stopper piston for the downward sensor. And one odd thing about this contraption, it's just about the only small diagonal flying machine that doesn't fly at a perfect diagonal. So for every four blocks to the side of move, it's actually moving three blocks down. So the slope is not negative one, but negative three fourths. So, you know, we gotta throw on shaders. We'll go ten times speed. Yeah? Let's see if it works. Okay, um, try to. Oh, that's so flippin' cool, dude. <laughs> Holy crap. Looks kind of like a lava guardian monument, actually. With a little, like, um, canopy on top. Okay, let's see. Yep. Dude, this is super cool. <laughs> dude, that's crazy. Oh, that's a lot of light updates. That is super trippy, dude. I guess if you were in need of a fast, weird temple setup, then hey, you got what you wanted. This is weird, dude. Okay, well, thanks for watching. See you next time.